All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone. So this is V6. Uh, some more of you might be familiar with this game. I have a lot to explain, uh, and I'm going to try to do my best to do it. Uh, I will say this category is any percent, no telejumping. Uh, telejumping is just a pretty major glitch that lets you uh, go through walls after you teleport. And so we're not going to use that. So this is basically no major glitches category. Uh, so I'm going to get started. Uh, it should start if I hit start game. So I will give a countdown. Three, two, one, go. All right. So we start out with short cutscene. I just have to match here. And the first thing we do in this category is die. All right, good. So there is a death key that's mapped to R that you can use to die at any time. It's supposed to be for custom levels, uh, so that if you get stuck, you aren't like soft locked and you don't have to restart the game. But we can take advantage of it in the run. Uh, so what dying did there was send us back to our ship. Uh, instead of playing the very first level, we just go back to the ship. So we skip the entire first level. However, that puts us in a state where we technically can't beat the game right now. Uh, so you think that might be a problem, but that will be taken care of later. Alright, so we're on to the quote-unquote first level. Oops. Uh, Space Station 2. We got our first shiny trinket. Alright. Uh, basically, speedrunning this game consists of just doing the fastest strats in every single room. It's very compartmentalized, uh, but explaining each and every room could take like at least a minute each, and you're only in each room for like a second, so it's a little bit rough. I'll explain some things. Uh, the main conceit in this level is these treadmills that make you run super fast while you're on them. There we go. A uh, couple other things that are important in general uh, to go fast is corner cutting. So you'll see sometimes I like flip off of an edge instead of just walking off of it. Ah, oh, jeez. I gotta get to that checkpoint at least. Uh, because when you flip, you're automatically at your maximum velocity for going vertically. But if you walk off an edge, there's a little bit of acceleration that you experience. So you want to flip instead of walk off an edge whenever possible. Alright, there we go. I got sandwiched by that platform there. Some more quick strats with these uh, treadmills. We're most of the way through uh, Space Station 2 by now. Alright, good. That's a tough room, V-Stitch, because you have to flip almost constantly, and there's no way to skip any of the spike sections, unfortunately. Alright. So we found our first crew member. There we go. Advance the last text box. And get onto this uh, teleporter, and we'll go back to the ship. Uh, you want to turn around when you reach teleporters because you can't activate them when you're moving. So if you turn around as soon as you hit them, then you can activate them just a tiny bit earlier. All right. So we'll be heading off to the next area, which is Warp Zone. It's hidden away. This is usually the last level that people find when they're playing casually, just because it's so far out of the way. And it introduces these warp tokens that take you to a different location when you touch them. I apologize for the uh, flashing effects. Uh, you can disable those, but I did not think of it. And it looks kind of neat. Oop. One of the main ways to go fast in the warp zone, and even getting to it, is knowing when you have to turn around immediately on a screen. Like there, during the earlier warp tokens, I had to turn quite a bit. So you just memorize where you're about to go. 
And same here. Like, you saw there I turned too early the first time. So this is the warp zone proper. You can see uh, every screen kind of wraps on itself in all but one direction. So it's all about uh, getting to the side of the screen where you need to go to get to the next one. And it allows for a lot of cool effects like that last screen. I try and turn around particularly early there to do that fast strat. There we go. There you can just flip. Uh, as soon as you touch ground, and you don't have to worry about anything. Here's a good example of corner cutting. If you corner cut in that room well enough, you can actually run into the like 8,000 enemies. So you gotta take it a little bit slow. Uh, hey, we're back here. Uh, since I did not hit that checkpoint in the yellow room, unfortunately, that was the last one I hit way back in this room. There we go. It can be a little disorienting with the screen flashing uh, to do these rooms as quickly as possible. And you actually have to wait a little bit in that room to uh, not get hit by the hearts. Now I'm on an off cycle, so it's going to be a little rough. Alright, I'll wait for this. Didn't hit the checkpoint in there. Ah, uh, of course. All right. Bit of a rough warp zone. These last few screens are just brutal. All right, there we go. I usually wait there and then fall in that hole to wait another cycle. All right, there we go. Ah, uh, if you edge flip right on that last screen, you can get to the teleporter a little bit quicker, but it's pretty difficult to predict where exactly you'll be, but that's Warp Zone. Alright, so we're on to the easiest level in the game, which is the tower. This is also uh, probably the most well-known part of the game, uh, partially because of the music and partially just because of the mechanic of the level, which we'll see in a moment. Alright, so we go down this shaft. That overworld movement can be a bit tricky, but we got through it fine. So yeah, Positive Force. This is probably the most popular song in the game, and it underlies what, for most people, is probably their favorite level, but for speedrunning, it's super boring. Uh, for a while, it's going to look like a pure auto-scroller, but there is actually a way using checkpoints so we can speed it up a bit. I did not quite get the first one there, but you can see the basic idea. If you run into a checkpoint and die, uh, when it's near the top of the screen, it'll actually speed the scrolling up just a tiny bit to catch you up to where you need to be. And we can do that six times in tower if we, if it goes well. I was a little early on that one as well. We get a second chance. There we go. Most of the time I can use the very top of the screen to die, but if not, I have the R key as a backup. And unfortunately, there's no way to remap the keys in the game, so you kind of have to like spread your hand across the whole keyboard. It's kind of amusing. We wait here, we skip going down those stairs, so to speak. Alright, there's no more uh, checkpoint abuse. So from here on out, it's just pure auto-scrolling. But we are already near the end, it's not terribly long. be tricky there, because you don't have much space before this spikes on the wall. There we go. Alright. So we found Vermilion, the third character. And here, uh, unlike normal, we're not going to go back to the ship. Uh, without getting too much into the lore of the game, this dimension that we're in is slowly collapsing, so instead of this teleporter taking us back to the ship, it's going to take us to this weird side dimension. Oops. There we go. And the basic conceit here 
can kind of, it's explained at the top of the screen, but in case you missed it. Whenever I'm touching the floor, Vermilion will follow me. He will try to move horizontally to where I am. Whenever I'm not touching the floor, so if I'm in the air or on the ceiling, uh, he will stay still. And we'll see that used a bit more. Like here, I have to wait a bit, and then flip with cautious timing so that Vermilion actually follows where he needs to. Alright. This is the hardest room in the intermission. Not as I do. Alright. Then you can do a little skip there to not go all the way back across. Alright. There is a faster way to do that by about six seconds. That doesn't involve flipping at all, but it's extremely difficult. It's one of the most hard tricks in the game. Alright. We use the R key once there so that we don't have to backtrack through this room. Alright, and that's the intermission. So now, here's where my death at the beginning of the run comes into play. Uh, I'm gonna teleport back to Space Station 2, and we passed by this teleporter here. Uh, that's the end of Space Station 1. So then we take it back, and I hold R to die there, and I can leave the cutscene that normally plays at the end of the first level, uh, and then I can go beat the game. It counts as rescuing a uh, Victoria, but you don't actually have to watch her cutscene. And that's lucky, because if you did have to watch the cutscene, uh, all your progress rescuing the other characters would be erased, and you couldn't rescue them again, so you'd just be stuck not being able to complete the game. So uh, one side effect of that, though, is that I have this level complete banner stuck at the top of the screen. That's going to be there until I either complete the lab or die. So hopefully the former. The lab also has these lines oh, that bounce you around. One thing you can do uh, that you may have seen earlier, it will come up again in final, the final level, where there's more of these lines, uh, is line clips. If a line is a certain distance away from the ground, uh, you can actually clip through it by pressing jump really quickly twice in a row. Uh, so you can use that to save some time. It definitely saves the most time in lab, but we'll see it again later. I'll point it out when it happens. I use some carefully timed flips here to get through these screens without having to pause too much. Alright, got a small time save there without by not having to wait an extra bounce cycle. Alright, and that last room looks pretty cool. We just flip off the top of that second line. Alright. So, the whole point of skipping the first level, besides obviously the time save you get from that, is we don't have to do the second intermission, which most of you probably lovingly know as Gravitron. Uh, there is an alternate route through the game that skips both intermissions, and it uses backtracking through lab to not have to rescue this last blue guy. Uh, but it's extremely difficult and it saves like two seconds in a 12 minute run, so I have not learned it. <laughs> it's also extremely inconsistent as well. So instead we use the Gravitron skip route. Alright, so the idea in that room, if I can get back to it, there we go. Normally, the game wants you to go like all the way to the left and then wrap around, but you don't have to do that. You can just hit the two lines. Oh, all right. Slight back up there. If you know exactly when to flip, you can uh, make it past that, those moving objects in one cycle. All right. So that's the first half of the final level, pretty much done. We're gonna activate this uh, terminal and then die and go back to the checkpoint. And now we're on to the last bit of the game. Just a really hard series of platforming. These enemies give a lot of people trouble, myself included. All right, these are the other line clips that we'll see. Come on. All right, fine. I'll do it. It'll go. There we go. 
they can be very inconsistent if you don't have a good setup for them. Uh, there's a couple different ways people do them. You can either use the same key, or you can use two different flip keys. Uh, I use two different keys, and I actually have one on each hand, so it's not too difficult, but it can still be troublesome. This room's also rough. There we go. I wait a little bit there, because otherwise you can hit the very top of the screen there if you go too fast. Alright. We're on to the very last bit. We found a second trinket. Alright, so real time will stop. I will give a count for it. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Alright. Alright, so we do have an in-game time as well there, uh, you can see 14.39 isn't too bad. Alright, so that's V6, uh, yeah, thank you very much.